What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV, and um, I want to give a shout out to uh, Ticket TV. Uh, he's already spoken on this matter about the, the phone call that Kyrie Irving uh, reportedly uh, gave to uh, LeBron James to apologize, I guess, for maybe how he handled the situation in Cleveland. And um, I saw some other people talk about it on YouTube as well. Uh, Say Less talked about it. And um, I want to talk about um, an article that I'm seeing on the USA Today uh, website uh, for the win. I think the article was written by uh, Charles Curtis. I'm going to put a link to the article in the description box of this video. And this article talks about the situation from uh, Ky uh, Kevin Love's uh, perspective. Of course, Kevin Love was a teammate of LeBron James and Kyrie Irving uh, in Cleveland uh, during the years that they made uh, consecutive, uh, what was it, uh, what, three consecutive or four consecutive uh, NBA final appearances, uh, three of them with Kyrie Irving as a teammate. And uh, the article goes on to say that Kyrie Irving's apology to LeBron James regarding the way the guard acted that eventually led to him leaving Cleveland is a surprise NBA fans didn't see coming. And according to a new report, neither did James. The Athletics' Joe Varden set the scene of the moment James heard from his former Cleveland Cavaliers teammate and Cavs forward and ex-Irving and James' teammate Kevin Love was there. So how did James react to seeing Irvin's digits on his call log? Quote, Love said, LeBron looked down at his phone and he showed us. He was like, I wonder what he wants. Uh, James, Love, and others were out in Los Angeles at a pizzeria. And although we don't know James inside the call, there are these details. James returns... Uh, Irving's call in private. A source close to James declined to share what was said on the call, but said LeBron was very appreciative that Irving called him. If their relationship was frayed, which the manner of their breakup in Cleveland says that it was, then some repairs are obviously underway. And Love, like the rest of us, can see how Irving is growing. Love said, quote, I was 22 once too. Quote, I think Kyrie went through some of the same struggles that I did, said Love, who was 26 in 2014 when he and James and Irving joined forces. There were some bad habits and maybe not knowing what it means to sacrifice and take a back seat to someone like LeBron who was trying to teach us how to win. Uh, um, I think I'm a much better player now, a much better teammate for having gone through it, unquote. All right. Um, all right. This is an interesting development. And um, maybe there was a lot of guilt, or some guilt that Kyrie was carrying around. Uh, from dealing with the past situation. Maybe he felt like he didn't uh, treat the situation or approach the situation in the proper manner. Um, I do agree with Ticket TV, and Ticket said this first. Um, I do think that he spoke to Kobe Bryant. You know, Kobe is like his mentor. And, of course, Kobe went through that situation with he and Shaq a decade and a half ago. And uh, I think that Kobe had a lot of, as Kobe has gotten older, there's probably some things he thinks about, like, wow, you know, I should have approached that situation that way. And I should have did that, that. And he's pretty much like telling Kyrie, you know, look, uh, don't make the same you know, mistake that I made, uh, go ahead and, 
caulk LeBron and apologize and, and just explain why you did such such X Y Z. Um, one thing that does come to mind is I think Le, I think that Kyrie now can understand and empathize with James more so now that he's in the position that he's in. Uh, you know, Kyrie is the leader of that Boston Celtic team. And I think it frustrates him that apparently a lot of the younger guys aren't listening to him. And it's this fracturing with the Celtics team, which is causing him to seriously underachieve as a club. Uh, many people thought that going into this season, the Celtics should have been the best team in the Eastern Conference. I can understand that, considering that without Kyrie Irving, their best player, and without Gordon Haywood, who before this year looked like a, an all-star caliber player with the Utah Jazz, putting up like, what, 22 points a game or whatever with Utah. The fact they went to the wire with Cleveland in the Eastern Conference Finals, it stands to reason that they should be the best team in the East now that LeBron's out, but they're struggling. You know, by their standards. And, you know, uh, Kyrie is probably like, okay, now I kind of understand how he felt about certain things and how I looked. You know, I was the one that was impatient. I was the one that wanted the leadership role before I was ready, you know, apparently. And I'm seeing this in guys like, well, I'm not going to say any names, but I'm seeing this in certain well, Rosier's fucking main dude. But I'm seeing this in these, these guys who have this sense of entitlement and blah, 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 whatever. Now, of course, the LeBron lovers in the sports media, if you notice, I kind of sighed when uh, Love was saying, well, he's teaching us how to win. And I. <sighs> I mean, the guy, the guy's won three championships, okay? Um, but let's not act like LeBron didn't have talent on every one of those championship winning teams, okay? He's had guys, okay? He's, he's played with Dwayne Wade. He's playing with Chris Bosh. He's played with Ray Allen, even though Ray Allen was at the, at the end of his career. But he's played with these guys, okay? So every championship he's won, He's played with Kyrie Irving. He's played with Kevin Love. So not like this guy, you know, is just not having anybody on his team. Well, well, I've made that argument so many times, but it doesn't make a difference. But one thing that I don't see in this is I don't think Kyrie has any desire to play with LeBron James in L.A. Um, I don't think that's what that phone call was about. And... Kyrie Irving is still a young star who's trying to create his own identity, make his own legacy. Uh, but I think he did just want to get that monkey off his back. I think that's what that was about. Um, but of course, the Nick Wrights and possibly the Chris Broussards and, and the Shannon Not Too Sharps of the media, sports media, are going to twist this narrative to make LeBron's you know, ego even bigger by making it seem like this is somehow a valid, this validates LeBron's greatness or uh, Kyrie is now want to go to LA, he wants to fall. I mean, the, fuck all of that shit. I don't think it's any. Of, it's about any of that. You know what I mean? But, um, I don't know, man. It's just... I think he just wanted to just have some closure in the situation. And um, I think that's pretty much it, man. I think he just wanted to move on from that. And um, But I kind of wish in some ways that that shit didn't go public. Because the sports media, as Kevin Durant said, they're full of fanboys. 
and you know they're just gonna run with this shit and whatever. But tell me what you guys think, man.